Hi! All right, so I just got my training wheels off last week and I wanted to know which was the best light to mount on my bike. So I bought and tested these seven different flashlights. This video is going to compare output, run times and stability, beam quality, overall design, and price. I really wanted to know how the usual flashlight brands that we test here on this channel compare to more conventional brands used in the bike world. So after asking for some recommendations, I picked up this Bontrager as a reference point, and we're gonna see how this compares to less expensive lights. So this is the Bontrager Ion Pro RT. This is a nice, simple metal bodied flashlight with a single emitter, a nice solid clamp with a quick release on the mount, and a micro USB charging port on the bottom. We're gonna talk about that. Our first point of comparison here is going to be the Olight RN1500. This is a very simple, sleek design with a low profile mount and is supposedly much brighter than the Bontrager. Up next is the Astrolux SL01. This is a very similar design to the Olight, but comes in at $60 and is sometimes on sale for much less. This is functionally very similar, but does include a remote switch and it has a smart mode that detects daylight and motion and is able to save battery. This next light here is the Phoenix BC26R, which is a little bit pricier at $90, but is made to a very high quality. This is the first one with a metal button, and it also includes a replaceable 21700 cell instead of a built-in battery. All three of these lights, the Phoenix, the Astrolux, and the Olight, have USB-C charging ports. Next up, coming in at just $40, is the Lumentop B01. This has a really unique optical design that creates a rectangular beam and has a more traditional round flashlight body with an easily replaceable flat top 21700 cell and a USB-C charging port. This light here is the Nightcore BR25. This has a really interesting hooded system that creates a cutoff beam that still has a sharp hotspot that can throw a long distance. It's got a really sturdy clamping system and the charging port is on the battery itself. So the battery has to be removed to charge this light. And finally, we have the Armitech Wizard C2 Pro Max. This is the larger 21700 version of the Wizard Pro, which is a general purpose EDC light with a headlamp mount and a bike mount, which makes this very adaptable. It's notable for being extremely durable and being by far the brightest out of all these lights here. It has a really high efficiency driver, but that comes at a cost with this one being $115. So let's start off with the turbo output numbers. Now, of course, all of these lights are going to advertise themselves based off of this turbo output, but like any high performance flashlight, that output is going to be short lived. It's going to get really hot and drop pretty quickly. Nonetheless, I did measure all of these at startup to be pretty close to their advertised claims. Starting off with the Lumentop B01, this came in at about 870 lumens. Next, we have the Astrolux SL01, which came in at 1,230. After that is the Bontrager at 1,250. Then we have the Phoenix at 1,511. The Nikkor at 1,540. Then the Olight at 1,590 lumens. And finally, the Armitech is the brightest of the bunch at 4,000 lumens. What really matters is light sustained over time. When we graph the highest output levels, we see that everything drops pretty quickly, which is expected. Effectively speaking, most of the lights are pretty comparable for the first six minutes, by which point everything will reach a fairly stable point that runs for the next 20 minutes or so. After about half an hour, we will see some more big drops that really begin to separate everything out. The Armitech Wizard is definitely the brightest, both in initial and sustained output, and has a great runtime for that result. The much more affordable Astrolux is next, with solid high outputs and decent runtimes, but a gradually falling level. The Olight sustains a high amount of light, but displays some output fluctuations, while the $90 Phoenix is brighter than the similarly priced Nightcore at first, but performs the same in the long term. The expensive Bontrager, unfortunately, performs quite poorly here, with huge short-term output fluctuations and poor stability, with an average sustained output somewhere in the middle of the pack. Finally, the $40 Lumentop B01 is the dimmest, but has excellent stable performance and long run times that really are quite impressive here, with a flat 450 lumens for over three and a half hours. Now, when we start graphing the lower modes, you'll see that things start to get a bit messier. We do have a range of different outputs. The very affordable Astrolux, again, did a great job with good high output and fairly good stability. And again, the Bontrager performed very poorly in this regard with great output fluctuations and poor stability. The $90 Nightcore BR25 did a great job, but surprisingly, the $40 Lumentop B01 actually matched it and did equally as well, so it's clearly standing out here as an excellent performer for its price. 
If you're going to be riding on the road, you want something that has a cutoff beam so that it's not shining into the eyes of cars and cyclists on the other side of the road. Of these lights here, the only ones that have sufficiently cut beams are going to be the Nightcore BR25 and the Lumintop B01. The Nightcore has this really interesting hooded system that cuts the top of the beam off while reflecting the rest of it downwards, but it also still has a really nice hotspot that projects a good long distance, so it allows you to see a long ways down the road. The Lumintop has this really interesting system where the emitter is pointed downwards, and then the light is reflected out. This creates a really nice square beam that does a really good job of just illuminating the road in front of you. Then we have this Olight, which kind of has a cutoff beam. It's this weird elongated shape, but it's only when the light is oriented sideways. So I don't know, maybe it's just supposed to be straight up and down in front of you and not get someone on the side of the road. But for all intents and purposes, this is not a cutoff beam. It does not work well in that capacity. And then the rest of these lights, the Astrolux, the Phoenix, and the Bond Traeger are just standard flashlight beams. So this is really good for off-road use. Um, but it's not ideal for on-road use. You do want to aim it downwards so it's not shining up. Then finally, we have the Army Tech, and this has a very floody beam. So this is really good if you're going to be on like trails or something where you want to see everything around you, but you don't need to see at a distance. This isn't great at a distance because it's so floody. It doesn't throw very far. One last thing I want to talk about is color rendering on these beams. It doesn't matter a whole lot for a bike. Light efficiency is probably more important, but pretty much all of these lights have cool white emitters. They're not super pretty, but they work well enough. I don't really have any complaints. However, the Armitech and the Lumintop both have really nice warm white emitters that in my opinion are much more pleasant to look at when riding at night. So another important aspect of any flashlight is going to be the user interface. The thing is, pretty much all of these flashlights have the same user interface. They're very, very similar. The only one that stands out is the Army Tech. Because this is kind of a normal flashlight for more general purpose use, it has a pretty standard interface. You click for on and off, then you press and hold to cycle upwards through the modes. It's a nice system, but it's not ideal on a bike because you would have to press it and hold it to change the modes. All of these other lights are basically press to turn on or press and hold to turn on, and then press once to cycle through the modes, then press and hold to turn off. A very simple system that works really well. All of the lights have mode memory, meaning they will always turn on to the last used mode, except for the Bond Traeger, which always turns on to the high mode. I do think that's actually a pretty nice feature, um, but it's kind of subjective. This one also requires a double press to turn on, which is a nice safety feature. In terms of extra modes and flashing modes, of course, if you're on a bike, having a bike flasher mode as a daytime running light is really useful to give you better visibility, even if it's not helping you see, right? Um, all of these lights have flasher modes, except for the Army Tech again, because this is not a traditional bike light, but it does have a strobe mode that you can use, so there is that. And then the Astrolux has this really unique extra feature called the Smart Mode. So in the daytime, it will actually detect daylight and it will turn on a daytime running flasher. So you don't have to worry about doing that manually. And then at night, it'll just be constant illumination, but it will also detect motion. So if you stop riding and it's standing still for a certain amount of time, it will turn off to save battery life. The Astrolux has another useful trick up its sleeve, which is this remote actuation switch. So this just plugs into the charging port in the back of the light then you can mount this on your handlebar or wherever and control the light with your thumb. So that's a really convenient feature. Now let's talk about the mounting system. So let's start with the Bond Traeger because this has a really basic but very effective mounting system. It just has a clamp that screws down here on the side and then an extra rubber piece is included to allow it to fit over smaller diameter bars. It also has a simple quick release on the bottom of the light. This is a very straightforward mount. It works really well, very solid. I like it. The Phoenix BC26R has pretty much the exact same style of mount. 
a little bit flimsier. It's probably going to need to be readjusted more often, but I do like the quick release a little bit better. It's faster and easier to use with this nice large tab. The Phoenix mount also allows it to be adjusted back and forth a little bit, um, but the mechanism feels kind of weak and it doesn't have nearly as much range of motion as the Astrolux does. Um, but you can do it to get a different angle. This Nightcore clamp is really nice. It's very sturdy and will not need to be adjusted very often. It also has a quick release, but it's a bit stiffer, harder to use. And then the light itself fits in these large rubber pieces here. So there is some shock absorption. This mount works quite well. Now this Olight has a really low profile mounting system, which looks nice and it does have a quick release, but this quick release is not as good as the others because you have to twist the light off of it. Not a big deal, I just don't like it as much. But the actual mounting system kind of sucks. I really don't like it. It has this plastic strap right here with rubber on the bottom, and it comes with four of these straps, four different sizes, that you can replace for different handlebar diameters. This will bend over on the side, lock in, and then you screw it down with an included Allen key uh, to tighten this. It's fairly secure, but it's just kind of a pain to adjust, and it doesn't give you as many options as the other mounting systems do. I just find it not as good, generally speaking. Next up are the more budget lights, the Lumintop and the Astrolux, which both have very similar mounting systems. So these have a threaded plastic piece that you just kind of screw down and it tightens onto the handlebar. This isn't the sturdiest system, but it is really easy to adjust. And being affordable, I don't mind it. But if you're gonna be doing any kind of rough riding, you'll definitely wanna pick up a tougher mount than this, which at least you can do if you're saving money on the light itself. The Lumintop just pops into this mount right here, so it's a very simple system, but it works really well. I like it as a budget option. The Astrolux has a quick release very similar to the other lights with the tab down here, um, but this light also has a neat trick up its sleeve where the mount has this adjustment that allows you to point it in different directions if you need to. It just gives you more mounting options. You can stick it in more different places and then just aim it where you need it. So I actually really like this mounting system. And then we have the Army Tech. Of course, this is more of a general use light. It's really meant mostly as a headlamp and it comes with the headlamp mount, which I have here on my smaller Army Tech Wizard. So this mounting system will actually work for both of the sizes, the small and the large wizard. And this will just pop right in and out of the mount, super simply like that, um, works really well. I actually really like this. If you want to have just one good light and just snap it wherever you need it, you can mount this on a bike. You can have another mount on a helmet or wherever else you want and just pop these in and out. And then there's also this rubber band that will secure them very nicely. The actual mounting system for the bike is fairly secure. It's not the tightest thing ever, uh, but it works. So after using and testing these lights for a while, what do I recommend? For me, the Lumintop B01 at $40 stands well above the rest. It has pretty much every feature that I care for. It's got a USB-C charging port and an easily replaceable battery. It's got a nice rectangular beam that is warm white. I really like that. It honestly is a really great flashlight and I'm shocked to see it perform so well at this price. My next recommendation is going to be the Astrolux SL01. This is a really good value. It has basically the same performance and features as the Olight, the Bontrager, and the Phoenix, but at half the price or less. I've seen this go on sale for as low as $20. It's got the smart mode. It's got the adjustable mount. It has the remote switch. The only thing that this really lacks in my opinion is a cutoff beam, and it also does not have an easily replaceable cell, which does mean that this does technically have a limited lifespan. And then the Nightcore is a unique offering because the beam throws quite a bit while still being cut off. So if you wanna see at a distance, but still not blind other people, um, this one does that really well. Otherwise though, it's a bit pricey. I don't like the charging solution. Now my next recommendation is going to be for the Army Tech Wizard C2 Pro Max. Um, just because this is a really good flashlight. I've tested the durability of these before. They're extremely tough. It has great performance. Uh, it has a really good driver. And I really like the warm white emitter here. The only issues are that for one, it has this proprietary charging system. The beam is super floody. It's really only good for like outdoor use on trails because it's gonna blind everyone around you. And it's quite expensive at $115 to $120 for this light. The Phoenix BC26R is just a good light all around. It's well built, it has good performance, and I like that it has an easily replaceable battery, which makes it a much better option, in my opinion, than the Olight. And then finally, we have the Bontrager. Maybe I just made the wrong choice. Maybe I should have bought a Lazine light instead of a Bontrager for this comparison. Uh, it's just no good compared to these other ones. The performance is pretty bad. The uh, build quality is okay, I guess. So, you know, it's got that going for it. The mount is pretty good. 
but it does have a micro USB charging port, which is way worse than USB-C in my opinion. I think that's a big problem with this light. It doesn't have a replaceable battery and it's the most expensive out of all of these. So do I recommend this? No. Now, of course, you could mount any flashlight to your bike if you really wanted to. Hardcore flashlight enthusiasts who have watched more videos on this channel might be familiar with lights that have the Andril interface. This is a more advanced interface that has many different options, including an adjustable bike flasher mode. So this is an Andril light. This one also has red LEDs. What you can do if you really want is set this to a bike flasher mode, mount it on the rear of your bike and have it as a sort of high-end adjustable tail light. There are several you can get from Noctagon, MSR, and Fireflies that have red LEDs and this interface. I'll link some in the description down below. All right, that's pretty much the end of this video. Again, we bought all of these lights with our own money. If I can, I'll put affiliate links in the description. Otherwise, they'll just be normal links. You can feel free to check those out if you want. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Goodbye.